Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Night Sky this week for May 10th. And we've got a lot of different things in the night sky, so why don't we dive in? Here we are. We've got our night sky set up for this week. If you're watching this archived, uh, later in the week of May 10th, this is still very applicable. There'll be a little bit of a few changes I'll be going into in a few moments. But the lay of the land, celestial land, is uh, if we look towards the western part of the sky, just after sunset, we have our friend Mercury still visible. Now, this reddish-orange star has been fading slowly in the last few months. It was really prime time uh, late in 2020 when we had a really good close encounter between Earth and Mars that allowed us to have a fantastic view of Mars. But it is still embedded in the Gemini constellation just under the two bright stars Castor and Pollux. Those are the heads of the twin stars that mark Gemini. And you'll see this orange star, which in fact is planet Mars, really hanging there in the western sky soon after sunset. My recommendation, though, is wait about a half hour after your local sunset to really get that view, clearer view of Mars. It is getting faint, but still visible. That's because the faintness is really due to its immense distance from us. It's out over 300 million kilometers away from Earth right now, and it takes over 17 minutes for the light to travel one way between our two planets. That's why uh, when we send uh, spacecrafts to the red planet, it takes so long for that uh, radio signal traveling at the speed of light to go one way between our planets. And we like to send our spacecrafts to Mars when our two planets line up. That's what happened last year in the fall in October. Our two worlds were at their minimum distance, something around 58 million kilometers or were what was what separated our two planets, less than five minutes light travel time between our worlds but now mars is much much fainter in our skies so that is why um, it's appearing so faint in our skies because of that grand distance but this is in the west and if you look very carefully there is another planet that is visible and that's mercury that's embedded in the constellation taurus you see taurus the bull's horn still depicted in this animation but of course that's going to be hard to see because uh, Taurus is a wintertime constellation, and now we've gone into the late spring uh, time in the northern hemisphere. And this is really when we kind of lose out on many of the wintertime stars. They're kind of sinking into the western sky following the sun. And But little Mercury, the planet, is now peaking up above your local northwest western horizon. I highly recommend you try to... Uh, Take a look at Mercury. Mercury is a uh, is a, uh, a challenging planet to see because it's so close to the sun. And if we zoom in on it, you'll notice that if through a telescope, you can actually see the phase of Mercury. If we zoom in very close, look at what it looks like through a backyard telescope. It looks like a miniature quarter moon, right? A half disk of the moon. That's what it will look like. But a super miniature version that's uh, really comes to um, visibility when you have high magnification in a backyard telescope. Now, you could have a very small telescope and see this very easily. Uh, and Mercury is uh, 144 uh, million kilometers away, and it takes light about eight minutes for it to reach your eye. That's how long it takes the light to travel from little Mercury, sunlight hitting those cratered surface, the barren surface of Mercury, and then reflecting back towards Earth, that travel time is eight minutes because Mercury is at 144 million kilometers away. So it's just, it's a testimony to how big space is, even our neighboring worlds that are, are at respectable distances. So this action is happening in the, in the evening sky, again, uh, Mars and Mercury are pinning down the western sky. Joining them, and, and, and let's remember, the moon is out of the way in this time of, uh, in the early part of this week. 
And so we get to see more stars. Star-like objects look better. So you've got Betelgeuse very low to the horizon. We'll be losing Betelgeuse very soon. That, of course, belongs to Orion constellation. And then if we move up, you'll notice that as the, as the skies darken, if and I'll just darken them a bit, so we're, let's say, about a, an hour or two hours after your local sun sunset, you'll notice looking towards the south, southwestern skies, that's what I've got it here for you, it's quite barren. There's not too many bright stars in the evening skies looking towards the south, southwest. That's because we're looking out from our Milky Way galaxy mostly. So there's, you know, it's devoid of bright stars, but those stars that you do see, those are all in our Milky Way galaxy. And the large empty spaces, this is where there's a lot of treasures, deep sky treasures. And we've talked about these before in previous episodes, but I, I have to say now is the premium time from March, April, May, and into June is really a wonderful time to explore this part of the, the night sky that's filled with uh, what we call uh, galaxies. These are islands of stars. We call our own island the Milky Way galaxy. It contains 400 to 600 billion suns. Our sun is just one. And we can see other of these islands of stars we call galaxies scattered across in the universe. And this wonderful window of uh, out of our galaxy is really at this time of the year uh, exists in the south in the southern part of our skies. And you can see popping up in the view as I'm increasing the magnification, you see these little ovals that pop up. These ovals okay are galaxies and they are millions of light years away so m105 and m96 are part of that famous messier catalog of 110 objects that you can see with a backyard telescope now if you have some binoculars do bring them out because you can see them as very very faint fuzzy little blobs under dark sky conditions there's no moon in the sky now, so that's good. If you can get out of the city into the countryside, that will help. Lying down, uh, propping up your binoculars, or having a, a tripod attached to your binoculars so you don't shake will really tremendously make your views better. And of course, through a backyard telescope, it's a lot easier. On a tripod, on a fixed mount, you won't get those shakes that would prevent you from seeing these very, very faint objects. But it's so cool because like M105, I know it just looks like a tiny little blob. Look at that. Just a tiny little blob. And yet it's 37 million light years away. It's a galaxy just like our own. Uh, uh, and it's part of a cluster of galaxies. You can see there's two next door. And if we look at a, a, a high magnification one, look at that. There's the galaxy that we're talking about that you can see. And there's three of them there. One is just off the, the side of the picture here, but this is a photograph through a backyard telescope showing what they would look like uh, under lo uh, long exposure. Really beautiful to, to, to view. And then there's another one called M96, a spiral galaxy. Um, again, many millions of light years away. You can clearly see the spiral formation. These are gas clouds, dust and gas actually. You can see the dark portions here in the spiral arm those are all the places where stars are being born and where they die so it's really a, a wonderful kind of view in this particular galaxy i find that you can see the the shape of it the structures in it and you, we can't see the individual stars so what you're looking at is the combined light of literally hundreds of millions of stars that are in this island uh, we call a galaxy and uh, we see the combined light. We can't, they're just, too, it's just too far away for us to see them individually. And this particular galaxy is 32 million light years away, M96. And where is all this action? If you're tuning in late, where are we talking about? Well, if I zoom out, this is in the constellation Leo the Lion, right in his belly, right in his belly. And you'll find the, con the constellations very easy to see above the southwestern sky. And look at that. The bright star Regulus is pointing the way it's like a giant backwards question mark. This is a fantastic um, uh, constellation, easy to find with the naked eye, even if you live in the suburbs of a city with lots of light pollution. 
and then to explore the belly of the lion and see some of these uh, galaxies is fantastic. And there's a lot more. I mean, Virgo next door, the maiden, uh, lead star. Again, this is in the evening time, about an hour to two hours after your local sunset. Looking towards the south, southeast, you'll see a brilliant blue-white star. That's called Spica. That's the lead star in Virgo, the maiden constellation. And it's underneath another bright star. You'll know you're in the right spot when you see that orange star Arcturus just above it. That's in the constellation Bootus. That's a next door constellation. But you've got Arcturus and you've got Spica um, right there in the south. Remember, we're kind of left of the lion. Lion's over here, Leo. And this area too is just filled with all kinds of goodies, deep sky objects. Uh, and uh, you can see just, you see all these little dots that are uh, on the screen here. All of the, look at them there. As I'm zooming in, you can see more and more of them. These are all called galaxies and they're part of a cluster of galaxies we call the Virgo cluster. We actually live on the edge of this giant, you can, you know, traffic jam of galaxies all crowded together. And there's thousands of them that belong to the Virgo cluster. And uh, it's just a natural kind of uh, conglomeration of galaxies that have huddled together in one part of the universe that is our local kind of area. And so, you know, you could just go cruising around this part of the, of the sky with a backyard telescope and it's just filled. All of this area is just filled, Virgo and Leo, filled with galaxies. This is where backyard astronomers love to hunt for galaxies. And so once you get a little bit, you know, more savvy with your uh, knowledge about the night sky, it's amazing what you can find. And a little small telescope uh, can provide you hours and hours of enjoyment cruising galaxies. It's not for the beginners to totally, but if you have binoculars and you just want to spend some nice quiet time cruising and looking for these faint fuzzies, it's just amazing to know. I mean, they're not, they're not fantastically uh, brilliant. They don't have a lot of structure to them uh, visibly. There's no coloration. It's just the knowledge of knowing that you're looking through the vastness of the cosmos. So I want you to guys to try your hand at becoming familiar at Leo and Virgo in the skies in the south this time of the year. And we'll come back to them and I'll, I'll be showing you some more galaxies there. I think it's worthwhile because it's just one of those fantastic things in the sky. Now, um, later this week, we're going to move back to uh, the sunset because there's more action happening there and I don't want to miss out on that. So I'm going to set it for sunset. And what I want you to know is just after sunset, and I'm going to go a few minutes after, let the skies darken, I want you to notice there's another planet that is starting to become visible and is rising higher in our skies. And so later this week, I want you to try your hand at another challenging planetary object, and it's Venus. Again, in the southwest, try to find a spot that you have a clear view to the southwest, and you'll find Venus. Now, why I'm bringing this back is because later this week, we're going to change our days, and we're going to hop over to... Um, we're going to hop over to, this is Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Look at that, right after Wednesday. That little dark blob, did you see that popped up there? That little dark, dark blob is the moon. And it's a very, very thin sliver moon. I've got it a little bit enlarged here, so it's not realistic. Let me kind of move, make it smaller. There you go. And the moon, just after being new moon, this is Wednesday, so Wednesday, May 12th, uh, you, I want you to go out 15 minutes, a half hour after your local sunset and look to see if you can see the ultimate thin, super whisker thin moon right there. See that? That's a real challenge, observing time. But it's a wonderful thing you can do with just a pair of binoculars and acting as a guide to find, believe it or not, the moon is going to be the hard one to see on Wednesday night, but Venus, that bright star-like object, that planet will be next door to it, acting as a great guidepost to finding the near new moon. This is gonna be the whisker thin moon, very hard to see, but look what happens by Thursday, May 13th. The moon will have jumped up to another planet planet Mercury, and it'll be a little bit thicker crescent. Look at that. I'll zoom in. 
check that out. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is something, again, this is Thursday night, May 13th, beautiful whisker thin moon next to planet Mercury. So by Thursday night, you should be able to clearly see the moon. Might be a little bit of a challenge Wait until, waiting until that darkness. There's this kind of sweet spot in terms of timing to see this. It's a wonderful challenge. You can bring your children out to see this. Uh, of all ages, it's something fun to do. It's a challenge to, can you see it with the naked eye? Do you need binoculars to track it down? Mercury will be right next door. It will be the only star-like object next door. Remember, it does look like a star to the naked eye, but use the moon as a guidepost. Mercury right now is as high approximately as it can get, as far away from the sun, so it makes it this challenging planet. This is the best time of the entire year in the evening sky to see Mercury. So out of 2021, now is really a sweet spot. Uh, to see Mercury in our evening skies. Now, if we move uh, this a little bit later in the evening, like an hour later, look at this. An hour later, it's so close. See, the moon and Mercury are sinking. Venus is gone. And you've got um, the moon next to Mercury in a darker sky, right? So try that. I mean, this is going to be a beautiful view. And uh, if I uh, just take it back a little bit an hour and I let's say I go to Friday I know you're wondering what is it going to be later this week so here we go Friday the moon is higher up in the sky kind of wedged right in between two other planets Mercury Mercury down here and Mars and the moon will be easy to see again this is Friday night May 14th check for the moon wedged in almost exactly in the middle between Mars and Mercury. So if you've got your your uh, binoculars, again, a great way to kind of guide yourself through the sky using planets and moon combination. It's a wonderful way to get, uh, you know, get oriented with the sky. And of course, if you draw an imaginary line between the two, ma it makes it easier kind of to see. You see the spacings are pretty much equal on between either planets and the moon. So uh, I definitely want you to check that out. And if we go by Saturday, look at that. Saturday, May, uh, May 15th, we've got the moon and Mars paired together. Again, a beautiful sight. This has happened now a few times over the last uh, recent months. So if you've missed it before, check it out again. This is a good photo opportunity again. All of these are great photographic opportunities with your smartphone, making some wonderful pictures with, of course, wide angle lens of your smartphone, showing the horizon with some foreground objects. And of course, that beautiful quarter moon hanging in the sky. It's a great combination. Please do show your support by subscribing to my Facebook or YouTube channels or on Twitch and make sure you share this video with your network so we get more people out under the stars. It's a lot of fun for everyone. So thanks again and I wish all of you guys clear skies. Bye-bye.